Alrighty, JP here, AAA Racing. Um, had a bunch of people lately ask me about the fuel setup on the 50cc. So what I thought I'd do, I'd make a short video and we'll pull the carburetor off it and uh, I'll show some clips and uh, how much fuel this little bike actually uses will um, probably amaze some people, but um, she's pretty thirsty and uh, that was the reason for the uh, increased size in the tanks um, before speed week. I, this is the old tanks actually we used to run on the 100cc when we first started. So um, one litre each. We ran two of them and then uh, the 100 started making power. So we, uh, I think we put a third tank on and then um, it got to the point when we started running uh, more and more nitro that um, we just put bigger tanks on because uh, we had fuel, we needed fuel and had pressure. And it's the same with these tanks here. These are the Moon Eyes tanks that um, I got off Chico for the uh, other 100cc nitro build, but um, I went to these because the one litre tanks, as we started making power on the dyno and the 50, um, it was going to be marginal at the end of the run, being being gravity fed, you know, we need that um, fuel weight at the end of a run to make sure we still have fuel pressure. So uh, these uh, more than did the trick for speed week, and uh, I'll pull this carburetor off and we'll have a look at it. Before I um, pull that carburetor off, so you've got the moon ice tanks here. It's a pretty simple system being a uh, non-blown, naturally aspirated bike, straight down to a fuel tap, through the fuel solenoid, to the bo bottom fuel remote ammo bowl, and then um, in through to the 276 um, ammo carburetor. And to all those people who said uh, it wouldn't work with the ammo carburetor, eh? Anyway, um, I'm just gonna pull this carburetor off now. And uh, well, actually, I've even had some comments about the K and N and uh, the dirty air that's going into the animal, but we've got a couple of little secrets inside that K and N, uh, and I'll pull the carb off and we'll have a sticky beat. Okay, I've got the two seven six off the bike. This carburetor was made in the fifties or sixties, so it's uh, stood the test of time. It was made for a street bike, so it's not really a performance carburetor. So we've made a, a couple of little modifications. It's not like the TT or the GP, and uh, the two seven six was more your street bike version. Uh, the reason I haven't got a TT or a GP, they don't make a lot of um, small TTs and GPs anymore. So the 276 is, uh, this is one and one sixteenth. So it was small enough to uh, put on the 50. Now it has a very short inlet manifold. Um, Arno Bidelot from Bidelot Technologies in France talked me into and told me the theories about the small inlet manifold. So I took his uh, knowledge on board. Uh, it's that short, you see, it's about as short as we can go with a tapered bolt to hold the carburetor on. Seven mil, that inlet manifold, so it's, it's pretty short. On the other end, we have an inlet here, just a tapered inlet, now, uh, rolls through to the carburetor there. And what that tapered inlet, why I've put that on there and machined the carburetor lip off, is that I wanted to get the inlet inside the k &N filter. Um, I wanted to get it past the rubber edge there. There's a, there's a, there's a step in the k &N, has a has a step there. I want to get that inlet past the step so it's getting clean air. I know I've had a few people uh, tell me that you know, the air will be pretty dirty coming through the K&N, but I think it's pretty still and it's a nice open area in there to keep the sole away and anything else and the dust and the dirt out there into the ammo. So that's worked pretty well. There's not too many other changes. On the 7mm inlet here, it also has a small taper that, that meets the vortex reeds. So um, as you can see, Pretty clean through there. There's not a lot, uh, not a lot going on. So um, that's the 276 body. We run um, a VPM5, which is uh, a methanol product from VP that has nitro, uh, nitro propane in it. Supposedly supposed to make five to seven percent more power. So we just, um, I call it uh, ten percent. We we'll just make it ten percent, and then we run twenty percent nitro methane on top of the M5. So I pretty much just say we run thirty percent nitro in the 50. I haven't had a lot of problems running the fuel. Once you're on the methanol, you know, methanol has a very wide tuning window. We were on the dyno and we and we did the maths to go to methanol and we did a pull and we okay, everything was okay. Then we just started richening the bike up, going bigger and bigger in jet size until the horsepower fell away. Then we knew we were on the fat end of the methanol tuner. Then of course, you wanna go run, uh, add nitro. So we went to the M5 first, which is, we still went up in jet again. And then we wanted to add the nitro methane 
Um, every 10% nitro methane, you need to go up 10% by volume. So we did the same thing again. We knew where our jet size was. We did the calculation on the square root of the volume, out of the 10% and probably out of 15% by volume to be safe. Did a pull, checked it, all okay. I haven't burnt anything down on the nitro. I should knock on wood. Um, that wasn't really human error or being silly or being greedy. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's it, you know, people say it's not forgiving and it, it is not forgiving, that's correct, but um, I don't think it's the enemy everyone's made out it is to be. Um, we have had a lot of success with the 50 and the 100 on Nitro. I know Dave Parker and the Long Shot Boys ran some pop this year on a couple of runs too and probably would have had more success, but they had some other issues. Um, it's easy horsepower, hey, like people get say to us, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? We can just add another 5-10% and make it run. Or, you know, it's it's simple. Um, and it's a land speed bike. It needs to stay simple. We see so many people out there overcomplicating simple things. And when you're there for the week, you don't need any issues. So this will be the thing that amazes people on this bike, the main jet. This is for a 50cc. And if you can see through there, you can just see through there. That's a 2.8 millimeter or 111,000 main jet. So this bike flows big fuel and that's where it's happy. But I did run one morning at Speed Week this year and it was lean and almost hurt the bike. It nosed over and went again. So I tried the seas, got some heat into it and came good. So when I run again on a cool morning or at altitude or at low altitude, I need a bigger jet. So we're talking about maybe going to 120 thou, which is about all I can flow in this carburetor setup. There'll be a three millimeter main jet. So it's pretty amazing, a 50cc to flow, you know, three, a three millimeter main jet. That's the diameter of the main jet, three millimeter. So that's you know, a big step up. Um, I'm pretty sure this banjo and setup on this carburetor is off the blown hundred originally when it was slower. <laughs> so you can see even the banjo has been opened up on the edges, chamfered on the edges, you could say, just to allow fuel out quicker. Just all those little steps. You don't need any, any slowdown of fuel, any restriction of fuel anywhere. We've been caught out before and bought fittings from um, companies and they don't flow what they say they flow or they've got a small or diameter somewhere inside that they shouldn't have. So um, that's the main thing on the fuel is just making sure you can get enough fuel to the bike to keep it happy. Um, Amel Carburetors, I've got to say thanks to Phil and the team in the UK. They've been with us for a decade. We've set all our records on both bikes using Amel Carbs and I thank them. Um, they've, they've stuck with us and I'm, I'm proud that we've got the job done for them because how that came to be was my dad ran Amel GPs and bottom fill bowls on his drag bikes in the, in the late seventies there. And I wrote, and his nickname was Amel Man. And I wrote an email to uh, Amel, probably 14 or 15, and they jumped on board. So I'm, I'm happy that we can uh, set the records and uh, use Amel's, Amel products. That's about it. It's a pretty simple fuel setup. Um, the simplicity is, you know, it's what we need. It's a land speed bike. We try to stay away, you know, we're not into, um, uh, fuel injection and stuff. We're carburetor guys. That, that's look at each to their own. I got no problems with the witchcraft and you fuel injector guys. There's just a lot of things to go wrong. So we set and forget. We know what the air density is and uh, we know what main jet size we've got and we know we've got enough fuel pressure, gravity fed fuel pressure. We know we've got the products with the Amel remote bottom fill bowl. Um, you can probably see it here. Just hangs off the bike here. So if I want to raise the, raise the uh, float here, we wind the whole bowl up and down. It sits there, a remote bowl, it's bottom fill. And the reason they made them bottom fill is because, you know, there's another inch or two there of, of, of head pressure. So when the fuel tanks are only this far ahead and you can lower the head pressure a bit more, it's, uh, it increases that. So um, I think in the drag bike, guys, we're running 98%, etc. You need to flow as much as you can through those bottom fill bowls. That's it. Take care. I hope that's answered any questions. If you've got any more, let me know. Um, the world's fastest 50. Thanks to Emil. Cheers.